Okay, so with all the informalities out of the way, let's uh, have the final talk of this morning by Samuel Lee, and he's going to talk about the towers of light states at infinity. Thank you. Um, I'd first like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak here and for putting together such a nice workshop. Um, so today I'll be talking about powers of light states at infinite distance in the modulized space of quantum gravity. In fact, mostly in the context of string compactifications. So the moduli uh, will naturally come in two different types, the Keller and the complex structure. Uh, I'll be covering both based on uh, these works I've done with my wonderful collaborators, Wolfgang Riehe at CERN, uh, Timo Weigand and Daniel Klauer at Hamburg, and Max Wiesner at Harvard. So our general motivation is to uh, study aspects of quantum gravity by asking which EFTs can couple to a fundamental theory of quantum gravity. This question at least theoretically divides the whole set of EFTs into uh, two complementary subsets, the swampland of inconsistent EFTs and the landscape of the consistent ones that are UV completable into quantum gravity. Uh, Every EFT in the uh, landscape is then subject to certain universal consistency constraints that are known as the swampland conjectures. Uh, these uh, conjecture constraints are oops, yeah, general in scope in that they do not rely a priori on string theoretic arguments, and they are sometimes useful for Fino, but they are not fully understood or proven. To better understand them, we can actually use string theory as a tool. Uh, within string theory, we can try to quantitatively verify some of the explicit conjectures and make them manifest in string geometry. We can also uh, refine or improve some of the existing conjectures. So there are a lot of swampland conjectures in the literature. This is just a partial subset. Uh, rather than trying to describe each of these, uh, let me just point out that they are closely connected in that uh, some conjectures imply some others. And arguably, at the heart of this web is this, oops, the, oops, sorry, yeah, the distance conjecture, and its refinement known as the uh, emergent string conjecture. Both of them concern the moduli space of uh, EFTs, or for the current purpose, the moduli of string compactifications. So the conjectures characterize universal behaviors of the EFTs at infinite distance in the moduli space as we deform the compactification geometry towards the asymptotic boundary. Now, the distance conjecture claims that a tower of state should become light at infinite distance in this exponential fashion for some um, constant alpha. And one can also imagine adding in cosmological constant, but this talk will focus on uh, Minkowski. This has been indeed confirmed in various string setups, but still remains a conjecture. And to develop intuitions, it will be very helpful to uh, reveal the nature or the origin of this light tower. And along this line, the emergent string conjecture was proposed, according to which, at infinite distance, the theory either decompactifies or reduces to a weakly coupled critical string theory. This is a refinement of the previous conjecture in that the former case leads to a light tower of culture Klein stations and the latter to a light tower of string stations. A strong evidence arises from non-trivial string setups, both for the Keller and the complex structure moduli. As for the Keller moduli, perhaps the uh, possibility of decompactification is rather natural, but emergence of unique critical tension in string has to be uh, very carefully addressed. Uh, the confirmed setups include F, M, and type 2 theories on Calabria threefolds, M theory on G2s, and eventually four dimensional F theory, both classical and quantum senses. As for the complex structure, uh, it's often uh, difficult to uh, see how decompactification is realized in the theory. Uh, the closed string sector of type 2 theory had been systematically studied since 2018, but less was known about the open string sector, at least. Um, until last year. So today, we will focus on F-theory as a non-trivial setup, and I will, I will report on our recent progress, both for the Keller and the complex structure sides, uh, hoping that we can, try, we can try to develop general intuitions behind the scenes. So let's start with the Keller moduli in F-theory. 
In fact, uh, in strings uh, 19, Timo talked about uh, our progress in 60. Uh, the general ideas will be pretty similar here, but the new success is that now we can control all Keller limits of four-dimensional n equals one F theory uh, with some quantum effects incorporated as well. Four-dimensional F theory is another name for type two string theory on a compact Keller threefold B3 with seven brains on its divisor S. So S is a complex surface and external gauge fields arise there. Uh, and these brains source a non-trivial exodilaton profile and all of this is encoded in an elliptically fibered Calabria manifold over this B3. Uh, but in our Kahler story, uh, we won't care much about this vibration structure because we will be mostly concerning the Kahler geometries of the internal space. Also, we can turn on gauge fluxes, but this won't affect the story either. Now, moduli space uh, in scrutiny will be the Kahler parameters, the tau i's here appearing in the Kahler form expansion of, uh, on B3. They govern the cycle volumes and in turn the couplings of the EFTs. In particular, note that the gauge coupling goes to zero if you extend the gauge divider S. Now we'd like to classify the asymptotic physics and to this end we will first classify the uh, geometries at infinite distance in which one or more of these tau i parameters are taken to infinity. Then genetically the B3 volume would go to infinity as well. Uh, and we can rescale the Keller parameters, tau i's to now t i's, in such a way that the rescaled B3 volume is finite. Then the simplest case arises when all of these rescaled t i's are finite, which amounts to just a homogeneous decompactification. Of course, a like kaluza klein tower kicks in. However, in general, such an overall scaling is accompanied by a relative one, this is a residual limit uh, uh, where some of these TIs are also taken to infinity. Then necessarily some other TIs should go to zero uh, because the rescaled B3 volume is to be finite. Then we are bound to have some shrinking curves in the geometry and they will play a very important physical role later. Uh, for an intuition you can just imagine stretching one side of the uh, rectangle while keeping the area fixed and you will get some shrinking curve. We actually determine the full Keller geometry at infinite distance together with some relevant topology by first classifying the allowed parametric forms for these parameters Ti. Uh, but in the interest of time, I will only just summarize our main result of this analysis. Uh, geometry first. The uh, Keller geometries of the threefold bases at infinite distance are classified into three types. Uh, as I said, uh, the limits involving a relative scaling should also involve some shrinking curves in the geometry. And in some limits, uh, there is actually a unique non-rigid curve that shrinks at a fastest parametric rate. And uh, uh, it turns out that this can be either rational or an elliptic fiber of the internal space B3. Uh, in all other limits, we realize that uh, part or all of the internal dimensions should expand. So that's the geometry. As for the physics, uh, in the first two classes, we have a tensionless heterodic or type two string emerging, and in the last class, the DFT just decompactifies. And this way, we can confirm the uh, emergent string conjecture uh, for every infinite distance limit of Keller moduli space for four-dimensional F theory. Okay, let me elaborate a little bit. Um, so when the B3 exhibits a unique fast shrinking carb fiber C0, uh, the D3 brain can wrap C0, and this leads to an effective heterodic or type 2 string depending on the genus of C0. And the, the tension of this string is computed by the volume of C0, which goes to zero, and therefore this string produces a light tower of excitation modes. Importantly, uh, we have a unique uh, uh, a species of most tensionless critical string thanks to the uniqueness property in geometry. So the new duality frame, frame is well defined for us. Uh, in all other limits, uh, no unique fast shrinking curve exists by definition. Firstly, uh, if no shrinking curves are present at all in the geometry, uh, only an overall scaling would be in play, which means that we have a homogeneous compactification. Secondly, multiple shrinking curves may be present or shrinking at the same parametric rate, and naively this will be pathology because multiple critical strings would arise this way. 
However, if you carefully analyze the geometry of the expanding cycles, uh, you realize that the KK scale, uh, in this case, always wins against the string scale signaling decompactification. And therefore, in both cases, we have light tower of KK modes. Uh, as for a fun application, the light tower states we found naturally connects to the weak Glavik conjecture. Uh, the latter claims that a Maxwell theory coupled to gravity must have a super extremal particle in the spectrum of which charge is bigger than the mass. In its minimal form, uh, it suffices to have just one such particle, but there are stronger forms which claim a tower or a, a sublattice amount of such particles. Then the option is that the super extremal particles can be explained at every weak gauge coupling limit. Such a limit is itself at infinite distance a Keller modular space because we have to extend the gauge divisor. And in fact, uh, a careful geometric analysis tells us that such a limit always falls into the class where the tensionless hydrodynamic string emerges, one of the three classes we saw. Then, via the Jacobi property of the hydrodynamic worship index, one can prove that the hydrodynamic string provides a superoximal tower slash sublattice uh, uh, as predicted. And that's how I wanted to end part one. <clears throat> now let's switch to the complex structure moduli of F-theory, uh, of which novelty is that now open string sector can be incorporated into story systematically. We're still with F-theory, but now in 8D for simplicity. So our internal space is P1, which is a, just a two-sphere. Uh, once again, the uh, Dilaton profile is encoded in the elliptically fibered now K3 over this P1. And now we will care for the vibrations. Uh, the vibration is described in terms of the via structure model of this form, where S and T are the homogeneous coordinate for the base P1, and F and G are degree 8 and 12 polynomials in them. And delta, the discriminant, is defined as FQ plus G square, of which vanish low size support singular fibers, indicating that seven brains lie there. So brain moduli are naturally part of the K3 complex structure. And mathematically, oops, the complex structure limit of K3 is, had been established under the name of Kulikov models of type 1, 2, and 3. Of these three types, it is known that the types 2 and 3 lie at infinite distance, uh, and I'll describe them later. And here, the physics question we'd like to pose is, where do we find the light tower states if we compactify F3 on such Kulikov models? So one of the goals we have is to test emergent string conjecture now in the open string sector, but there is also another a priori independent goal, which is to clarify the fate of the so-called non-minimal brain stacks. Now, before describing what is non-minimality, uh, let me first briefly remind you of, of uh, uh, what is known as minimal uh, singular fibers, which is for the minimal brains. Geometrically, uh, singular elliptic fibers are classified in terms of the vanishing orders of F, G, and delta. And uh, in this table, uh, we have a list of uh, uh, vanishing order triples. They are for uh, what is known as the non minimal fibers. Uh, and such fibers in a co dimension one locus in the base uh, are immediately translated into gauge algebras or brain types. And they all sit at finite distance, resulting in a finite Lie type gauge enhancement. They're all very well known. However, the, the classification does not stop here. If you look at this table, you see that the, uh, you have either F order less than 4 or G order less than 6. However, degree-wise, it's degree 8 and 12. Uh, there is nothing wrong for them to go beyond 4 and 6 simultaneously. And uh, such badly singular fibers are called non-minimal. Uh, now, the models with non-minimal fibers are typically discarded in F3 model building because mathematically, uh, such models lack a Calabria resolution, rendering the physical interpretation rather obscure. However, such models are there, you can just write them down. To be complete, um, I must add that there are also singular fibers that can arise co-dimension zero, uh, i.e. genetically in the base. So uh, infinite distance limits potentially arise in these two different uh, types, and I'd like to address their physics now. So let me first summarize our main results. Uh, geometry first, uh, we refined the two Kulikov types at infinite distance into, well, each into two subtypes, uh, so four in total, 2A, 2B, and 3A, 3B. Uh, and we also uh, 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 made sure that the candidate limits we have indeed lead to uh, these different subtypes. 
Uh, as I promised, I will, I will describe the geometry of the type 2 and 3 models, uh, but I won't tell you what precisely distinguishes the subtypes A and B in geometry. Uh, so in this, so you can just view them as the names for their physics, which I will describe, actually. Actually, right now. So here comes the physics. Uh, type 2A, 3A, and 3B lead to decompactification, either to 9D or to 10D. Uh, and a type 2B corresponds to a weakly coupled string theory. Uh, <laughs> so this way, we already see that the emergent string conjecture is confirmed for every infinite distance limit now in the complex structure moduli of ATF theory. And I must say that type 2A and type 2B had already been known, and they serve as a sanity check for our systematic procedures. Okay. So, uh, so far I've been speaking of Kulikov models all the time without telling you what they are, and now let me tell you what they are. Um, it's all about degeneration of K3 surface, which in algebraic geometry is described in terms of a threefold family of surfaces, XU, and here U is a parameter that sits in the unit disk. So in this picture, away from u equals zero, you have a smooth K3 surface xu, but over u equals zero, you have a degenerate surface x0 decomposing into uh, various components, x upper i's here. And this is how the degeneration is described in a threefold family. Then the degeneration is called a Kulikov model if the family exhibits certain nice properties, which I, I will never talk about. But let me still point out that uh, all these criteria are not restricting the physics at all. It is known that uh, given, any Kulikov, uh, given any degeneration can be turned into a Kulikov model by certain operations which never affect the physics. Therefore, given an F3 geometry, you can turn it in principle into a Kulikov form if you know how to. And now we claim that we know how to. Okay, now, um, uh, uh, as, this, as stated, type 2 and 3 Kulikov are at infinite distance. So let me describe their geometry. Uh, type 2 models, uh, they come, uh, the, the so component surfaces of the type 2 models are in chain form, as in this picture, and the adjacent pair, adjacent components meet along an elliptic curve. And in our elliptic case, because we are doing F theory, uh, because K3 is also elliptic, we have the components also elliptic over the rational basis Bi. Furthermore, it is known that two transcendental two tori should shrink in the limit, which I'll denote by gamma one two. Um, and I'll, I will talk about their importance in physics later. On the other hand, oops, type three limits, type three models, uh, we have the, the components arranged in an arbitrary fashion, well, not arbitrary, but slightly less constrained fashion, and uh, the components meet along a rational curve instead, and now we have only one transcendental two torus shrinking. Okay. Now, uh, with this background in mind, let me now elaborate a little bit on our findings. Oops, <laughs> okay, I'm doing this. So, uh, this is our, uh, Oops, I'm sorry. Gosh. So, okay. Yeah, this is our classification. So, um, once again, in uh, uh, the singular fibers may arise either in codimension one or codimension zero. And in the latter case, um, we may assume that we have a genetic IN fibers. And uh, IN fibers meaning zero, zero N vanishing orders for FG delta. Then the genetic divergence of the J function in the U equals zero limit implies that we have a type 2B coupling going to zero globally in the internal space. And this is essentially the Sen limit, and we can show that all these models can be turned into a Kulikov type 2B form. Uh, now, if you have models where you have codimension one non-minimal fibers, then you can show that they can be turned into type 2A, 3A, and 3B, and in fact, type 3B is also involving a dilatonic limit here, and this means that both, thank you, both codimension one and codimension zero singularities are present, but we know the physics of the ladder, so we will um, just focus on the remaining two subtypes. Okay, so the, the geometric strategy is very simple. You just keep blowing up. Um, in this picture, the degenerate surface at u equals zero have smooth fibers generically, but 
uh, there is a non-minimal fiber sitting at this blue point, say at s equals zero. So we have delta order vanishing to either uh, degree 12 or bigger 12 there. Then this allows us, in the end, to blow up along the base. Uh, and this corresponds to actually looking into the inner structure of this non-minimal brain stack. And this turns the P1 base into a chain of P1s, and then this non-minimal stack into a bunch of minimal stacks. And then at this stage, you can further blow up along the fiber to make sure that you get to the Kulikov model. But the FD physics should be already clear upstairs. In the end, in any case, you, you realize that the K3 with the non-minimal fiber leads to either type 2A or type 3A, depending on the vanishing order of the delta. Okay, let me briefly talk about type 2A models first. Uh, the geometry can always be put into this form. You have a pair of rational analytic surfaces, or DP9s. Uh, you have genetic I0 fibers, and at the intersection point, you have, again, a smooth fiber. Uh, so these two uh, surfaces are... Uh, indeed, intersect at the common elliptic fiber over P. And this is a closer look where the uh, red crosses indicate the seven brain loci. And as a type two limit, you must expect two vanishing tori. And then indeed, you can spot them. They are essentially the, the two one cycles as NSP fibered over this vanishing one cycle in the base, sigma, uh, around the point P. Now, in M theory, M2 brains wrapping this vanishing two tori lead to a pair of light BPS towers. And in F theory, the towers arise from the 1, 0, and the 0, 1 string around the, the base 1 cycle sigma. And they are both allowed by the trivial monodromy at P. So for the physics, we propose that the EFTT compactifies to 10D given these two towers of KK-like modes. And uh, uh, this can be made manifest in the dual heterotic picture where the heterotic torus is known to expand. Now, quickly about the type 3 A limits. Uh, the geometric configuration goes like this. You have more than two components, and they are still in a chain form like this. And it turns out that the middle components uh, support generic IN fibers with N positive, but you must have at least one end component supporting generic I0 fibers, i.e. DP9 surface. And this is a closer look at this DP9 surface together with this neighboring component. Uh, over B1, you have generic IN fibers where as A cycle shrink, uh, and uh, this persists to this intersection point P, so this is shared by B0 as well. Now, you must get now only one shrinking two torus because it's type 3. And indeed, you can spot this shrinking two torus by fibering this vanishing one cycle as A over this vanishing one cycle in the base sigma around P. Now, one important difference is that now around P you have a non-trivial IN monodromy, and therefore you cannot fiber SP cycles. So you only get one uh, shrinking two torus. Now, in M theory, M2 brains wrapping this two tori, two torus, uh, lead to a light KK tower, KK light tower, and uh, in F theory, uh, the tower arises from the one zero string around this one cycle sigma, and this is allowed by the monodromy of IN. Now, for the physics, we propose now decompactification to 90. Uh, and this will be strongly supported if the heterotic dual torus uh, has not only the Keller, but Keller modulus, but also the complex structure uh, are going to infinity at the same rate. And happily, we could confirm this behavior at least for E7 times E8 models by using the known mirror, ma mirror map uh, 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 applicable to this particular class of models. Now, this clean athletic picture for the light tower uh, can actually have another interpretation in terms of the uh, so-called affine extension, but uh, I'm uh, really running out of time, so let me, uh, I'll have to skip over these details of this, and instead let me just jump to the conclusions. Okay, uh, the emergent string conjecture refines the distance conjecture by proposing the nature of light tower as either Kaluza-Klein or string excitations. In other words, every equidimensional limit at infinite distance should be a weakly coupled string theory. And this should be familiar to you because it's very much mimicking the notion of string duality. And the proposal is that string, string duality should be at work for every such limit. Thank you. Yeah, just one minute. So, uh, Comprehensive study of string vacua will provide intuitions, and in this talk we analyzed uh, geometric F3 vacua. 
So uh, the conjecture was addressed firstly in the Keller moduli for four-dimensional F-theory via geometric classification of infinity sense physics. Uh, this amounts to verification for a, a non-trivial class of string EFTs with Fourier supercharges, which amount to a minimal number of supercharges that a quantum gravity can ever have, a genuine one. Uh, as for the complex structure, we analyzed ATF theory and again confirmed the conjecture by geometric classification. And uh, uh, notably here, uh, we saw that no minimal brain stacks can be realized as a brain modular limit as well. And uh, uh, therefore, we, we clarify the decompactification. So finally, uh, future directions. Let me comment a bit about the dimension of the external space-time. Uh, Whenever we reduce the dimension by two, we also halve the number of supercharges by uh, one half. Uh, and, 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 and this amounts to relaxing the constraint of dynamics. So the theories are much more general and it is very difficult to control them. And this is reflecting the fact that the internal space dimension gets higher. So you lose the control over the topology, let alone the geometry. However, as for the Keller limit, we managed to control the wild, the threefold based geometries, uh, even for four dimensional n equals one EFTs. As for the brain limits, uh, our, uh, our AD analysis was a non trivial starter, and now we are looking into six dimensional theories where lots of fun can happen actually because the brains are now one dimensional, and then there are co dimension two effects, and there are some bases which are not even P1 fiber, there is no straightforward direct generalization from AD, and a lot of fun there, and then uh, we are getting there, so please stay tuned. And finally, uh, today's talk was about the top down approach to uh, emergent string conjecture, and uh, it would be very nice to have a bottom inspiration, and this would even bolster the importance of string theory as a quantum gravity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, questions? There's a question here. Is there a possibility to comment on uh, more refined properties of these uh, spectra, these towers, like uh, degeneracy, spins, masses? Any, some, any more detailed features that so, we should expect? Uh, in the, so you're talking of the Keller sector, right? Um, so, we, so we were actually looking into the worksheet partition function, or the worksheet index, of this uh, heterodic uh, uh, 0,2 theory. And then we uh, got to this, uh, at least the index version of the state counting, at least. So if you look at the worksheet dynamics of the emergent string limit by looking at the worksheet of this uh, emergent string, then you can indeed, in some cases, work out the at least index part of the spectrum very explicitly. Yes, thank you. There's a question there. Hi. Hi. So um, you commented a little bit about the, on the relationship in your 8D story to the heterotic description. Yes. Um, and uh, the, the question is, um, in, the, in making the comparison between your geometric analysis and the heterotic um, description, mm -hmm. are there sort of surprises on the heterotic side? In other words, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, infinite distance limits that are not sort of the obvious things that I might think of on T2. So, thank you. I would say um, the more non-trivial side is in F theory because heterotic side, at least in AT situation, is just a T2. You just degenerate. The, you just take the Keller modulus infinity or the complex short infinity. So there are not much you can do in the heterotic side, at least. But this is just used here as a as a as a sort of manifestation of the decompactification in this dual picture. So maybe the analysis is simpler in heterotic theory. However, there is one thing I can say. Uh, there I can um, advertise this work by uh, Grania Fonterol. all. So indeed, so there, there has recently been a classification of uh, 90 and 80 heterotic uh, gauge algebras, and uh, this is not a trivial work. You have to go through very careful work, and then they classified all possible gauge algebras of heterotic 90, 80, and then uh, this can also be seen from the F3 side, but there it's a little bit easier. So indeed, there can be something easier in F3, but also in heterotic theory. So yeah, thanks. One final question over there. Yeah, thanks for a nice talk, Sangyu. Can you uh, extend the AD analysis to situations with frozen singularities, like the CHL string or the rank? 
to compactifications. So CHL, uh, CHL string uh, generation to CHL has been actually already done, already been done by uh, Svetis et al. I actually cited the paper. I didn't have time to time to point to this. Uh, yeah, indeed. So there there is some work about CHL vacua as well. And I didn't get the first part, but was it related? Oh. No, well, the the rank one, uh, the rank two compactifications in a dimensions. The the, the ones which have two frozen singularities, maybe they also cover it. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not hearing. Uh, the, 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 the compactifications we ha which have two frozen singularities, the ones which have rank two in eight dimensions. Two, two for six, you mean? Two, uh, uh, two, two, oh, 207 pluses and 207 minus. Uh, oh, yeah, 207 plus was also done here. Also, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. You can refer to this paper maybe, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's uh, thank the speaker again. Thank, thank you. Uh, Before you disappear, there's uh, one announcement. Thank you. So sometimes I get these uh, secret letters by Abiram telling me what I should announce. So first announcement, please the Gong Show speakers, could you please come to the uh, conference office in the, during the break? Second, uh, well, think of leaving your badge when you leave, but uh, still keep it if you want to have lunch. And third, so please still let us know uh, if you develop symptoms of COVID or get tested positive even after the weekend so that we keep a bit track of what our conference costs like a spreading event. Okay, enjoy your lunch. <laughs>